Hello everyone and welcome to our presentation about Land and Waves outdoor instructor training. My name's Alex, I'm here, uh, our director here at Land and Wave. And my name's Johnny, I'm an instructor as well as doing the marketing, social media and recruitment for the instructor training course as well. Nice. We're going to try and get a lot of information across to you in quite a short amount of time and hopefully that will pique your interest so then you book on and you come and meet us face to face and we can go jump in the sea where we'd much rather be. So getting straight into it. One quick link, quick. This is it. This is us. This is the instructor training. And this is me and Johnny. We both teach across all of the, the activities on the OIT. So if you do book on, we'll be out there on activity, taking you on adventures throughout the winter. Um, if we do at any point today, um, say OIT, it's just an abbreviation of outdoor instructor training. Just after a while of 15 weeks of it, we usually end up just calling it the OIT. So if we do do that, we, it means outdoor instructor training course. So just so efficient. So efficient. God, God, efficient. So when you're getting into the outdoor industry, understanding the quali qualifications that you're trying to get can be quite confusing. In a nutshell, every sport or activity that they do at multi-activity centres has an associated governing body or NGB. Just like the FA, Football Association, exists to govern football in the UK, we have British Canoeing, which exists to govern paddle sports in the UK and to make sure that it's done safely and in a good way. A lot of the qualifications are structured that you have to have pre-experience. So before you go to do an official training course, you have to have a good healthy logbook of personal climbs or personal paddles, and you need to have a proficiency in whatever that activity is. That's really important. Gaining that proficiency then allows you to get the most out of the training course. Then you'd go away and do consolidation and you'd practice those things you've picked up on the training course. And then when you're ready, you present yourself for assessment. Now, some things, it's easier to get that pre-experience. So, for example, Lowland Leader, it's easier to get the set amount of walks that you need to get on the training course because you can go out walking by yourself fairly safely and just practice your map work. Whereas getting the pre-experience for the rock climbing instructor becomes a little bit more complicated because going out and just getting the personal lead climbs where you have no experience at all can be a little bit scary. And I did an apprenticeship 15 years ago, and I dread to think of some of the situations I put myself in. So our 15 week course, we talk about training and assessment courses, but never underestimate that you have a lot of time under instruction, gaining that pre-experience before you go on to the official training course. And that's what makes up the bulk of our 15 week instructor training. So getting into specifics, British canoeing. I'm a water baby. I do a lot of the water sports on the instructor training. British canoeing, you're getting your personal performance awards. So that is your personal proficiency in canoe, sea kayak and stand up paddleboard. So you can grab any of those craft. You can handle it in certain winds, certain waves. They are like getting your black belt in karate, saying that you're good in that craft. British Canoeing also offers safety awards, foundation safety and rescue and national navigation, coastal navigation and tidal planning. They are safety awards, which is you learning how to rescue other people and learn how to do it safely in that environment, whatever it is. So those two you cover in your 15 weeks. You also do your paddle sport instructor award, which is allows you to run introductory paddle sport sessions from all of the craft above to all of the other craft. And by this point, by the end of the 15 weeks, you're getting really experienced. So we also do the training course, the paddle sport leader training course, which is the next step on the instructor ladder. And you get the training course. So you can then go and do your first season and be ready for the assessment fairly early on after you've gathered group experience. So British canoeing. And here's some lovely images. We start off on the rivers in Dorset and we make that whole learning experience progressive. So even if you're completely inexperienced, we start in fairly benign, calm conditions and we teach you strokes and how to kind of handle the craft. And then we steadily make it more difficult and up the ante. So one of the last days last year, we were doing surfing at Kimmeridge Bay. And one of the instructor trainees on the right there was just a 
everyone was able to handle the waves, make the most of the day and have a really awesome time because of the skills that they'd learned. Uh, yeah, this was a pinch myself moment. I, this, I can not <laughs> believe yeah. that it was a day of work. Yeah, that's Al, Al on the left, just there, uh, just cruising and enjoying life. Yeah, I'm, I might look miserable, but yeah. I'm having a great yeah, yeah. day. <laughs> it's a concentration phase. Exactly. Uh, and then likewise, we go down to Dartmoor, the week on white water, just giving you experience in a more dynamic environment and just becoming really comfortable in a kayak and a canoe. So yeah. canoe, this is Mel, who's our water sports manager. And again, this is just actual footage from our trip down to, to Dartmoor last year. Nice. Cool. And John is just showing off his photos. <laughs> that is a great photo. Good oh, work. Amazing. Um, so the next one we're going into is the um, mountain training, uh, the National Community Body for everything, which is rock climbing uh, and walking, basically, and mountains and like that. So um, the rock climbing instructor training, as we spoke about earlier, we just do the training on this course because the pre-experience to be able to then go and do the training for the rock climbing instructor is quite a lot. You have to get um, 15 um, trad climbs, which traditional climbing, which um, if we look at these photos here, um, is when you place the gear into the rock. So you've got here, Ross has got this gear on the side of him. You place it on the rock and that protects him. We also do um, sport climbing as well, as well as then indoor sport leading as well. So it's outdoor climbing. So it's three different aspects of it to get all that information and knowledge you need in your head to be able to go and do your training almost takes up probably about eight days, eight days of the course just to get the knowledge to then go and do the training after you have the training we, we usually do that near the end of the course it means that you can go out and you can um just climb safely with a friend or other people who have done the course and get those logged climbs for your assessment for it um the next part of it as well is your uh, lowland leader um training and assessment now we do training and assessment in this one because the majority of people who enjoy the outdoors have been walking before okay so everyone have, has a feel of what a map's like and uh, is able to kind of get out and be already at a level where they can kind of read a map and get walking what we then go on to teach you uh, for those few days before your training course is uh, compass skills pacing and a bit of kind of um, night nav and a bit more micro nav so finding like using the contours on the map as well so we take you from looking confused in this photo this is my model face and then also known as his confused face. Yeah. <laughs> and still. then moving on to these guys who uh, this was on their training um, course. It's a two day training course and they were um, just going out and just tossing the nav, which they've been practicing. Uh, you have to have 10 walks before you could do your training, but they can be from any time in your life. So uh, the older you are, the more chance you've got those walks already. Uh, so that's good. Brilliant. So by the end of the 15 weeks, you come out with your load and leader assessment. And that links into our next one. So you have an assessed walking qualification which allows you to work on duke of edinburgh expeditions which is a big chunk of work in the uk outdoor industry in order to staff dv experts you need to have done the supervisor and assessor course which is a one day dry course but it unlocks a whole load of work for you straight away off the back of the 15 weeks uh, nice and here's some photos from expeditions we live in lucky to live in the purbex We'll talk about the accommodation, but it's perfectly located for you to go out and get the walks that you need to consolidate to prepare for assessment. So we also do uh, outdoor first aid level three and a level three safeguarding. So they're both qualifications that underpin all of your other qualifications and you need to keep active for as long as your career in the outdoors. The outdoor first aid we do early on in the course, so then we can carry on running scenario based first aid situations across all of the other activities. So by the end of the course, you're really well prepared. So if anything does happen when, on your first season, you've kind of been, oh, Johnny, quick, he's dislocated his shoulder. You've been in those situations before. And this is Paul Taylor, who's our course director. And Johnny, he's going to love you for that photo. I know, <laughs> I thought I'd just put it in there as a little tease. So yeah, we get out the fake burns, the fake blood and everything like that. And just kind of, as I was saying, over those two days, we really put like the scenarios to, uh, to, to life. And it's a really, really good fun. And we get harness, rock climbing harnesses and kind of big up the scenarios, which is, which is really, really good. Um, bushcraft. Yeah. So Bushcraft doesn't have a governing body, but the NCFE is an awarding organisation we put together a syllabus that they've now externally accredited. So you've become an NCFE level two bushcraft instructor. On that syllabus, you cover things like fire lighting in a whole manner of ways. So being able to walk into a woodland, harvest the materials to create a bow drill and take a, uh, a bow drill to, to flame like Luke's doing in that picture. We do a whole load of knife skills so you can harvest the, the correct type of wood to make feather sticks 
and then use a ferrous rod to, to take that to flame fairly easily. We do, in that knife skills section, you do spoon whittling, uh, tool, campfire tools. You just do a whole uh, ream of activities based in the woodland environment. And then we try and build up your knowledge of the flora and fauna in that woodland environment as well. So yeah, very Ray Mears, a really hands-on, very um, sort of a nice way to spend time in the woods. So yeah, bushcraft and scrapper. So the next ones we do are the, um, for the Royal Life Saving Society, they're just life-saving qualifications. So the first one is the NWSMP Level 3, which includes an in-water rescue element. Uh, that's also known as the National Water Safety Management Programme. This focuses a lot on risk assessments and managing groups near and around water. Um, you'd be surprised quite a few people will have to have this if you've got a building site and things like that near water. Someone on the site is going to have to have their NWSMP Level 3. So we covered that and we use that majority of the time with our... Um, uh, co steering award uh, means because it means we can go out and um, assess those risks when we go in co steering, uh, which is quite a dynamic environment. So there's a lot of dynamic risk assessments going on in there. Uh, we get to go out in three different like river locations, don't you? So you do rivers, seas, and still water. Still water as well. So you go out and do um, three different locations, also perhaps your throw lining and, and safety around that. Where we also do um, the uh, National Vocational Beach Lifeguard qualification as well. Um, this is a six day course, and it's actually the first day, uh, first time we're running this. Um, in the instructor training course, it's because we find that more centres around the UK are wanting um, the uh, Beach Lifeguard Award. So it means that it means that you're more employable after the course finishes. We don't want you guys to be limited to having to stay down in Dorset. We want you guys to spread your wings and go and work anywhere within the UK. And that's how we curated this list of qualifications. None of them are in-house training. They're all, as Al said, national governing bodies. So you can go out and work anywhere you want to, which is really good. Um, this is the first time we've done this. So actually, this is the first time we've actually you've got to have a bit of fitness to do. Um, this part of the course mm -hmm. so you've got to oh, I can't remember the so you have to is. do the swim fitness test yeah. to become a beach lifeguard which is 16 lengths of the pool in under eight minutes so 400 meters in under eight minutes yeah. we are going to do the assessment at the end and you have 15 weeks to kind of get swim fit and if you aren't making those times by the end of the course we can also offer the open water lifeguard yeah. so there are contingencies in place but with that much time to prepare it's completely achievable yeah. to, to get to that level it's another great qualification that unlocks working for the rnli on the beach lifeguard for the summer which is a really nice job to have for the summer and yeah. it's the qualification that they look for so it's a good one to sort of get involved with yeah, it's a good kind of stepping stone isn't it yeah nice. absolutely and that's our water safety competence those two things that go hand in hand with our co-steering guide so there historically there wasn't an ngb but last year the National Co-Steering Charter is the first organisation that is offering awards specific to co-steering. And we're working towards the co-steering leader training. So just like rock climbing instructor, before you get to training, you have to have been co-steering 10 times, so which is what you'll get through the 15 weeks. And that will be in a range of locations. And then you'll go and do your training course down in uh, Torquay with an external training provider. And then you'll be a NCC guide trained which means in your first season you can be deployed to assist on training sessions oh sorry co-steering sessions and as soon as you have 10 of those sessions in your logbook you can present yourself for assessment and become a full fully qualified ncc guide and then that is a, an award that you can take with you wherever you want to work and the run co-steering so yeah something we're trying to get behind and it's a great progressive activity. So we start off when it's nice and calm like uh, the picture on the left and then we progress it's a bigger swell and you can have really good days like Isaac in that picture on the bottom right, who is uh, having a best day I think, ever that, I think well. that's a fun face rather it than a pure panic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. uh, and then obviously we've got, we've got a part of coasting is jumps, caves, exploring the coastline, being affected by moving water. So it's really cool. You get a big um, range of um, in, skills. Like, skills and stuff to do in there. Another big one, there's a big, big wave here versus the um, calm water. So we build up progressively. It's not going to be your first day you're going out on these huge waves. We do build it up so that by the end of the course, you can go out and, and enjoy the, the big weather conditions. When you're ready for it. Yeah. Nice. Amazing. So the next bit is the price breakdown of the instructor training course. So we've broken it down to kind of like three easy areas. So the training and assessments, so as we were saying earlier, the big part of the course is you getting the training in those qualifications so that you can go ahead 
and all that training the pre-experience so we can go ahead and complete those training and assessment courses so that's uh, the 5600 is towards all of that uh, 2500 is for the food and accommodation for the course the accommodation and food is um seven days a week and the training course is monday to friday there's an occasional weekend in there we would get those weekends off so the actual training days is five days weekends off for the food accommodations for the full seven um the kit package um which i'll show you just on the next slide uh this is included as so about 900 pounds you get wetsuit buoyant head helmet there's loads more kit than what this image displays yeah. dry um, suit, dry suit. basically it's about two thousand pounds worth of gear which you'll be getting for 800 uh, 900 pounds um but we managed to get it at trade price so you guys get the best kit at the best affordable price for you guys um, and that's just us about we pass that discount straight on that's just about us preparing Preparing you to be successful outdoor professionals yeah and um, yeah it's a it's a really good deal and that kit is for you to keep as well yeah of course which is great no um there's also a 500 pound deposit to secure your place on the course but as i said as you can see it comes off the overall price as well um amazing so then a quick look at the accommodation um so it's um it kind of like bunkhouse accommodation is the best yeah. way to describe it um so we've got twin rooms which will be shared which are these ones here on the right hand side where it would just be two people in this larger room and on the left hand side this is our single rooms where mm -hmm. it'd be one person having this whole room here on the left and we've partnered with an outdoor center that's based just outside of Corfe castle and they we have exclusive use of that site for the duration of the course the dining facilities you get served three meals a day and in this over uh, the aerial shot, you have two accommodation blocks at the back, the dining room, plus a communal area with a log burner, which you can make cozy. And then there are drying rooms for your kit as well. It's very suitable for the accommodation and it's the most cost effective way we can uh, accommodate you all um, and not make the course even more expensive. So. The next steps, so for you guys to come down, we want you to come down and meet me and Al in person, as much as it's nice to e-meet you. Um, we kind of want to, oh, no. <laughs> that was cringy, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, keep going. <laughs> keep um, it. So uh, we want to come down and meet us in person. So we do run uh, free open days. Um, I will add the um, those, those dates uh, and we'll send them to you when we send you this video. Um, so there'll be free open days, come along, jump on an activity, learn a bit more about the course. Um, next one is to pay a deposit and then that unlocks the ability to come down and shadow as much as you want to from when you sign up to the start of the course. And that kind of gets that pre-experience in there as well and kind of discovering your instructor style. And then step three is starting the course. And that starts on the 31st of October, 15 weeks, two weeks off over Christmas and finishing up around, I think it is the 24th or 25th of Feb. So 15 Perfect. weeks all in all. Awesome. I hope that's uh, answered some of your questions. Maybe it's created some more. Don't be shy. Don't be a stranger. Just pick up the call. Give a pick up the phone and give us a call.